Hi everyone. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to be at this conference. I enjoyed every one of them so far. <coughs> uh, so this work done with my student Wei Lei, who is somewhere here. Yeah, over there. And so basically, it's when it started, I had very little knowledge of the mathematics involved, and the mathematics is very beautiful, and I will t tell about it just a little bit. <coughs> so, so basically, I knew about hypergraph product codes, and I knew about higher dimensional Tori codes without understanding of the rich mathematical structure in, in, in those. And, and it's, it's some projects that we started, and I just wrote down the matrices trying to generalize the hypergraph product codes. And then I visited INRIA and said, well, look how big matrices I can construct. <laughs> and they said, well, this is just uh, the product of tensor product of chain complexes. And I said, well, okay, you, everybody knows that. But, but, there was, but at the same time, Wei Lei was running numerics and he looked at the distances and it turned out that the bounds on the distances are good. And so that gave me the additional push to actually try uh, to spend some time trying to understand what the distance is and now first part of this uh, so there are two parts of it first part is out this is the archive it just appeared in PRL and the second part is uh, well basically 100 percent due to Whaley who was thinking about subsystem codes and other types of codes and he actually came up with the map and the much simpler proof where, uh, which actually I will be able to present here, which is very non-trivial because the original proof, it would not be presentable in, in, in any talk. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, so, so first of all, the motivation. And, uh, well, motivation is the whole uh, set of talks today gives us uh, sort of, uh, we're sort of trying to dig on this big problem, right? So the quantum computation, experimental quantum computation today, experimental effort is based on the surface codes. Everybody, or other topological codes, there are some, you know, topological color codes, etc. But basically, you know, a majority of effort is sort of focused on trying to construct a quantum computers that would be useful, that would be focused on uh, Tori code or surface codes. And they are have, you know, huge number of big pro properties, except that they have zero rate. Now, what we want to have is finite rate codes. And there is example of finite rate codes that would be, that would be, you know, good enough. And those are finite rate LDPC codes, okay. And so we know that they have fault tolerant threshold. We know sort of a lot of them. So, you know, the pre previous talk, you know, shows that it is possible to syndrome based decode. And there are actually a couple more talks today talking about this. You know, there is a possibility that you would be able to do protected gates with these codes in a similar fashion as you can do protected gates with the Tori codes. And so what, what, what I want to do is to generalize the class of the hypergraph product codes to be similar to higher dimensional Tori codes that would allow in sort of this construction would give us redundant checks and so tricks like you know, high accuracy uh, stabilizer measurements or what is called single shot decoding would be possible. Okay, so there are other possibilities. You know, unfortunately, the parameters of the Tori hypergraph product codes we cannot improve, but there are other pro good properties of these codes that are of sufficient interest. And so, so if you look at the Toric and compare Toric and hypergraph product code, so this is my cartoon. So in the Toric code, you have checks of two type, right? It's on squares, lattice qubits are on bonds. I show them as rectangles because I'm going to pull it up in the third dimension, right? So there are squares and there is the X-like uh, operators. 
that so these live on plaquettes, these live on vertices, so there are local and 2D stabilizer generators, and the logical qubits are chains, and there are homological and non-trivial chains that spread through the system, and this gives you sort of nice properties for these codes. Now, if you look at the hypergraph product codes, sort of, it, it is not possible to draw random hypergraph product codes. What I show here is a sample of hypergraph product code or minimally non-local hypergraph product code, which is based on cyclic code, which is just a little bit better than the, than the repetition code, which can be used for construction of the Tori code. Okay, anyway, and so in this particular case, you have checks of weight four, or sorry, of weight six, so I have the same square plus couple more additional plaquettes. And the further these additional plaquettes are, the better the properties of the code. So this code, you know, the more than locality, the better rate of the code you can potentially get. There are theorems that guarantee that, right? And then, again, in this case, the logical, uh, logical uh, operators, again, are strings topological strings, but because the checks are non-local, this can have holes. And so these binary strings have, these strings have binary patterns. And so when you shift them, you know, in one direction or to some extent in the other direction, you get linearly independent strings. And so that gives you a much better rate of the code. So this code encodes two qubits, the other code encodes 18, nine times, nine times more. Okay, and that's, uh, that's, so what's so good about these codes? Now, sort of what, what I will present today is this uh, product construction that sort of is similar to higher dimensional Tori codes, but it will give you, again, pattern surfaces or patterned strings as logical operators, and so you will have a much bigger rate, a finite rate, asymptotically out of this construction. Okay. So mm, now let's let's see. So <coughs> so this is the part, the math part that I finally learned a little bit, and so I will present how it works. So so we are talking only about CSS code, and that's Calder, Bank, uh, Shore, Steen, and Shore, right? And, and so you have a couple of, pi, you know, a couple of binary matrices whose rows are orthogonal. And now all my linear algebra is done mod two. And so, and so I just write the product of two matrices. So this is orthogonal mod two. And so if we transpose the second matrices and define couple you know, matrices like this. So I take first matrix as HX, second matrix and as HD transposed. Then the same orthogonality condition we can read as a product of two matrices, A1, A2 equals to zero. And so once I have a, pro a couple of matrices like this, I can arrange the three spaces, right? So the matrix A2 takes you from space you know, second space to the first space, and then matrix A1 takes you from first space to zero space, right? So it's a linear map on these binary spaces. And so these maps have a property that the product of two of these maps is always zero. Okay, and so, and so therefore I can treat this uh, sort of two matrices as a part of a chain complex where, ch where chain complex is basically a set of linear spaces, uh, finite dimensional linear spaces with linear boundary maps between them. And the defining property of the chain complex is that boundary of a boundary is a zero, meaning that the composition of these two maps must be zero. Okay, and so, and so any any in this map, any CSS code, actually corresponds to, actually a half of the CSS code corresponds to the chain complex. Okay, so, so in addition to this chain complex, there is also co-chain complex where you take spaces in the opposite direction and you transpose the matrices. Okay, and so Z code words, those that are checked by the X parity check matrix are elements of 
uh, are elements of this space A1, right? These are have lengths n. Uh, there are cycles, meaning that A1 multiplied by this code word is zero, which are not boundaries, and so C is not equal some linear combination of you know s boundary uh, map by, by done this, and so and so these code words form first homology group of run k and you also define the distance which is you define similarly how you define distance in the quantum code so this is the minimal weight of a non-trivial z code word in the code is the distance dz okay and so the entire quantum code of course it has z code z code words or z logical operators and also it has x code words or x logical operators which obtain which you obtain by exchanges these two matrices generator matrices hx and hz or you have to exchange matrices a2 and a1 and transpose them and so and so in this case the z the, the entire code is a the, the entire set of logical operators is a direct sum of the uh, first homology group and the first, hom you know, cohomology group in the same complex. Okay, so now I got through the math, or through the definitions. And so now we want to look at longer co chain complexes. And so in this case, I have, you know, two, three matrices, and then here I have some number B of little matrices B. So one complex is A and the other complex is B. And so the tensor product of these complexes is made out of tensor product of individual spaces. So I have space A1 times B1, A2 times B2, A1 times, so all, all of them in any order. But then they are arranged in, so, in sort of sequence, in, in the sequence, in sort of levels. So where this big chain complex is formed, you know, level zero is formed by the product of spaces A0 cross B0. C1 is formed by two such that the sum of the indices is one. C2 is formed by three combinations such that the sum of the indices is two, etc. And so this gives you the gradient. And then most importantly, to define a chain complex, you need to introduce this boundary operator. And so in this case, the boundary operator for a product of vectors, so you have alpha vector from one of these spaces, beta vector from the other space, and the prod boundary operator is defined as the uh, sort of linear combination of this, and this looks like derivative property. Right, and so and so this is the uh, this is the defining property, and so so the point is that out of any vector in the product complex, you generally have little arrows that goes to two different spaces, and these arrows represent boundary operators. So from a one b one, you go to a one b zero. This is using the second uh, second operator. And you go from, you go this way to A0, B1 using the first operator. So from each there is at most two arrows. But then of course, if you come to the boundary here, I have this formal D, it's sort of an empty matrix because this space, which is sort of there just to define, it's sort of just a set with zero, it's just zero. So this matrix, this operator D has zero columns so it's empty empty matrix right so every el whatever element this el this operator gives you zero okay and so there is a theorem so this science is very old and there is a very old theorem i don't know which year which says that the homology group is a you know the elf homology group of the product of chain complexes is equal to direct sum over the products of the homology groups uh, with different grades, such that I plus J equals, uh, equals to L. Okay, and so if you have a basis, and of course we're talking about code, so we always assume that we have some basis, so I, th in uh, sort of, in my simple-minded way, I think about matrices always, and so once you have the matrices that define this, this uh, boundary operators, then I can, 
I can write the explicit matrices for the product complex. And so for the first complex, right, remember there, so, so this space, left space is zero, zero, and the right space is one, zero, and zero, one. Okay, and so you see there are, from the first complex, there are two arrows, and so there are, you know, first matrix has two blocks. Second matrix has three column blocks and two row blocks. Again, this space is one, zero, this space is zero, one, and then the uh, upper spaces are two, zero, one, one, zero, two. And so you can sort of read off the matrix, the tensors, this, this, this structure of the matrices, and you can check so and so the minuses go in every other position, and you can check explicitly that the products are correct. So for example, first row here multiplied by the first row, right, so the only non-zero product is A2 cross E, where E is identity matrix, and A3 times E, so A2 times A3 is zero, check. Right, and then first row times second column, you get A2 cross B1 from the first, and then minus A2 cross B1 on the second. And of course, we are working in binary numbers, so minus doesn't do anything, so I, you, you know, I might as well not write it, because uh, for binary numbers, minus one is the same as plus one. Okay, anyway, and so you can write the dimensions of these co chain complexes, and then from the this theorem, you can write the rank, or as we know, this is the rank of the homology group is exactly the number of encoded qubits. Okay, and so question is, what do we know about the distances in this chain complex? Because the distance is something that can sort of tell us about the properties of, you know, how good the code is. Okay, well, first of all, <coughs> if you look at uh, hypergraph product codes, you discover that these are exactly, this form exactly a product of two chain complexes, so you have two, two matrices N1 A and B1, so just arbitrary binary matrices A1 and B1, and the product of the corresponding very short complexes each has only two non-trivial spaces and one non-trivial boundary operator, so this product is is exactly given, you know, and so Tillich and Zimor were able to construct the distances and this formula is a little bit complicated, but basically if you have, but basic property, if you have, mm, yeah, I'll, 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 just, I'll just leave it at that. So there is a formula for the distance. It it's doesn't look very good at this point, but we'll come back and we'll massage it to look better. Okay, B because uh, this language is very hard to understand. When we come to uh, the definition in terms of chain complexes, it turns out that it's much easier. Okay. Now, sort of, if you have a product of two complexes, and of course two complex corresponds to the quantum codes, so there were two lower bounds constructed by, uh, you know, by these people, but they are not exact. They are sort of, you know, just lower bounds. And, and what we have, we actually constructed a bound which matches the known upper bound. And so that we know for the product of chain complexes, we know all distances exactly, okay. And so this is the form in terms of the, okay, so this is the form. So unlike, unlike in the case of this, uh, of the, of the, uh, of, of these codes, we don't really care about the other half of the code. So here we care about only the Z vectors in the code, right? And so, and so the, <coughs> so for at, at level L, there is a minimum over, th there is a minimum, so there are only two non-trivial spaces at level L. Uh, mm, yeah. And, okay, so if you have, one complex is long of arbitrary m length m, and the other is one complex, right? Then there, are, there is a minimum over two elements, and so here you have the distance in in, comp in of the homological group A at level L minus one, and this, this is the distance in complex B at dis at level one, and then the distance in complex A at level L, and the distance at level zero. And now this distance is level zero is actually quite tricky 
because it's either one or zero. And so what happens if the matrix B1 is a full, mm, is a full row, mm, okay, if matrix A1 is a full, B1 is a full row, is a full row rank matrix, then the distance happens to be infinite. So this code in the space B B0 doesn't actually have any elements, and so the corresponding distance by this, there is a convention that the distance has to be infinite. Okay, anyway, and so we conjecture this property that for the product of arbitrary length complexes, you have this minimum over all combinations of the distance, and these are just all spaces that enter that en okay that enter this uh, the enter the that enter the, the, uh, the that enter those that that enter at this level okay and so to see what's going on so let us look at the structure of the matrices so again i write the matrices at level l and at level l plus one right so the product of these two matrices is zero and then these are, uh, so the red labels the spaces. So for the first matrix, the spaces are L0, L minus 1, 1, L minus 2, 2. So this is I and J. So I plus J is L. And whereas the rows are labeled, you know, the sum of low for rows, it's the previous space. And so the sum of the rows indices is L minus 1. So L minus 1, 0, L minus 2, 1, etc. Okay, and similarly, for the second matrix, I have, on the left, I have the same indices that label the columns, right? Because the product of the two matrices must be equal to zero and must be well-defined. And so this space matches, this column space matches this row sp space, this column space matches this row space, etc. And so for convenience, I just shaded the second the second row in the in the in the, in, the, in the column, and so the trick that Vale invented is to say we don't actually need to look at this entire vectors. What we want to do, we want to look at just one subspace, and essentially erase everything else in the vectors. And it turns out that this is sufficient to have the lower bound on the distance to be equal to the upper bound on the distance, which is given by the Kunis theorem. Okay, and so, so, so let me see before I go on with the lower bound, let me just show the simple upper bound. And the simple, and the simple upper bound, basically what we need to do, we need to come up with an example vector that satisfies the conditions, right? And so, and so basically here is my L equals I plus J vector in the space C. And so it has a bunch of different blocks, right? And so I'm going to take all of the blocks non-zero except for the block I comma J, where I would take two vectors ZIA cross, you know, tensor product ZJB. So ZIA is the element is any vector, any non-trivial, homologically non-trivial vector in the space AI. So it satisfies AI Z transpose equals to zero. And then it is not a linear, com it's transpose, it's, it is not a linear combination of rows of transpose matrix AI plus one. And so similar ZJB is a homologically non-trivial vector from the space, from the second complex at the level J. Okay, and so this is, so you can check that this vector is linearly independent from the rows of the second matrix, and so this gives you an upper bound, and if you, at this level, if you take the best vector possible, you know, sort of, you choose that f f both vectors reach in the distance, you get this upper bound. And then you just have to go over all subspaces. And of course, if in some space you don't have any homologically non-trivial vectors, that means the homological group is trivial, then the convention of infinite distance guarantees you that you sort of don't include that in the maximum calculation. So this gives you an upper bound. And so now what I want to do now, I want to sort of do a projection into just one subspace. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase all of the other subspaces. Now, 
in the so essentially this is equivalent to defining a subsystem code right because we don't care what happens everywhere else we just care about this particular subspace and so I cut you know come back again so I cut this column from the matrix C and I cut this row from the matrix from the next matrix and so here I rewrote so this is my column E cross B A cross cross E and then this is my this is my row and now these matrices don't don't uh, are not orthogonal right these matrices because these actually are the gauge group generators of the subsystem code where I erased all qubits except the qubits in one grade of the subspace okay and so and so I can generate I can write this is ge the generator matrix for the gauge uh, operators GX and GZ is just transposed of that and okay and now what I need to do I need to calculate the Z distance of this subsystem code and this is uh, technical uh, sort of ideologically this is very easy what we have to do we have to come up with the stabilizer group right and because it's a CSS subsystem code we only need to come up with the stabilizer group of the you know the X part of the stabilizer group so basically and this is also easy if we know that the stabilizer group is generated by sort of elements of G group of the uh, of elements of the gauge group and it has to be a center of the meaning that it has to be a center of the gauge group and it has to every element of the stabilizer group has to commute with every generator of the gauge group okay and so so basically what what it means technically would have to choose linear combinations of this group such that of this of this matrix of the rows of this matrix such that they would be orthogonal to the rows of of the matrix gz okay and this is the matrix so 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 here so you see let me sort of first uh, explain the notation so x i a is the matrix whose rows are code words or uh, homologically non-trivial vector at the level i so they basically they satisfy x i a times i a plus one zero and they are linearly independent uh, okay from the columns of a i or is it from the rows from the rows of a i right so th so rows of this matrix are linearly independent from the rows of this matrix but nevertheless you know so here I have identity matrix and of course I can choose this pair right and then here I have a and so here I replace it by a, cr a cross e I replace by a cross x and so now it's very easy to check that th the orthogonality is correct okay and then you can also check the rank of the matrices and you can check that the or sort of that the cross product of the matrices Z I A cross Z J B which is sort of all of our code words at this level would be would be this would be would be would, would give you the basis of the homology group now we know the basis of the homology group this we know already from the Kuhn's theorem or from the proof of the Kuhn's theorem but we still need to find out what the distance is Okay, and the statement is this kind of matrices we you know we tried and tried we could not find the distance. Okay, however, however there is a simplification in the case where we have the proof, namely when the second uh, is sh when when the second complex is short, this should be Roman. Uh, I mean, this should be italic B, not curl, not not. Okay, so where it is made where the second complex let's look at the case where the second complex is short and so in this case what happens is this so let's let's first of all so let us say B1 is uh, second complex only has matrix B1 okay uh, yeah some indices are missing here Okay, so second complex is short and only has one matrix. So this row is not here. Then, <coughs> then what happens is that, again, these two spaces, I mean, no, 
these two spaces bj and xb so this actually you can combine into this identity matrix again and and this is the reason why is in this case on the left hand side you just have the rows which are Okay, so 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 these these solutions X B J at the left hand side would be just the rows that are orthogonal to the to the row to the columns of B. Uh, well, oh boy, there is no second matrix, and so this would be just the rows that are linearly independent from the rows B J, and so together you can combine them and form an identity matrix like this. Whereas this part goes without change. And so what I'm saying, this looks exactly like the parity check matrix of the concatenated code, where the inner code, okay, my you know, pointer is that. So my inner code is formed you know, by check matrices A and I and AI plus one transposed. Right, so these are the generators, and then the code words X I A and Z I A I used to form. I used to form. Mm, I used to form the. I, I used to form the. I, I I used to form the generators. Oh, thank you. I used to form the generators. Okay, I used to form the generators. Um, you know, the code words I used to form the generators, the bigger generators and the concatenated code. Okay, and then distance is well known. This is just the product of the distances for the concatenation, concatenated codes, and this gives you the proof of the lower bound of the theorem. Now, I must admit that we could not find the pr just the, this proof that the distance of a quantum concatenated code and this with this kind of generators is given by the product. So we actually had to write it out. So, you know, yes, it is well known, but we had to write proof anyway. Okay. And so, and so now what we have in the general case, we call it symmetric concatenation. So this is, again, the full matrices. So in this case, you have A cross B, A cross X, X cross B. So you see sort of the re these are sort of, you know, the you take code words of A code and use them to form the big stabilizer generators. And you take code works of B code and use them to form big stabilizer generators. So this is, you know, a different construction and again, there is a numerical evidence, there is a, you know, sort of, um, Vele ran his program for a long, long time, and he could not find any examples where the upper bound is not equal to the lower bound on the distance. So every time the distance was equal, and so the conjecture, the, which is slightly stronger than the conjecture we had originally about the lower distance, is that the distance of this symmetric and concatenated code is ex the z distance is exactly the same as the usual concatenated code shown here. Okay. And so now, how much time do I have? No time. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. So examples: still H Z more. Hypergraph product code is a particular case. You can take a couple of a matrix and its transverse and run sort of m fold product. And so if you take A1 is a circular matrix, then which is generated by, you know, with two elements in each row, which generates the repetition code, the check, mat the check matrix of the repetition code, we get the m dimensional code, uh, Tori codes exactly by this construction. And then in general, there, are, there is the polynomial expansion for everything that is related to chain complexes. And so this is the generating polynomial for the length of the code. This is generating of the codes. This is for the, for the size of the homology group. And then the distance is minimum of the product of the distances where you have a non-zero contribution to K. That's sort of the explanation of the formula. Okay, now applications. Uh, well, basically we extend the class of, how, you know, these codes and there could be other constructions. You could try to construct rotated code families, which would be, 
which would be similar to rotated, uh, to rotated uh, toric codes or rotated other classes of codes, hypergraph product codes, and you know, in two dimensions we know of these. And then they are useful for single shot and for transformation tricks. And so this is all I have. Okay, let's have maybe one or two quick, que quick questions. <coughs> Thanks for the talk. So I know some of the work that you presented, but the stuff where you were talking about the relationship to uh, subsystem codes, is that on the archive yet? No, we're writing it up. Okay, I yeah. thought I hadn't seen that before. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, let's okay, thank okay. you again. If I have one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so I, you know, I learned about it from the sort of news that I read. Yeah, so apparently uh, this may, this uh, Russian guy whom I don't know, Yaroslav Shitov, published an archive disproving the conjecture that comes from 1966 about the chromatic number of uh, product of two graphs. Okay, and so it was conjectured that it was equal to the chromatic number of the original graph, but in his con construction, and the point is that his construction involves exponential graphs which are so big that they wouldn't fit in any computer. And so the counter example is there, but you cannot verify it numerically because it's so big, right? Nevertheless, it's proven analytically. And so this is the case where numerically you can spend your entire life running computers, clusters, or superclusters, even Google clusters perhaps, <laughs> but you would not be able to prove the conjecture. Now, the co this product is not related to our product, there is a different product where the similar statement does sati is satisfied, but nevertheless, so this is about the conjectures. So there are you, you have to be very cautious in if you are m want to make precise statements. <laughs> okay, so on that word of warning, let's uh, <laughs> thank the <laughs> <end of> <laughs>